Let's do a quick example of hypothesis testing once again. This is from the review section in the book, chapter 26 about cigarettes. To summarize, in 1999, 34.8% of high school students smoked cigarettes. Let's take that as a, a given baseline. We want to reduce to 16% eventually, and the short-term goal is to at least reduce to at least 30% by the end of 2001. So in early 2002, they took a random sample to 10,204 students. Notice that's pretty big. And 28.5% said they smoked. Is this evidence that they're on track? OK, well, what's the appropriate hypothesis? Well, we really want to compare to this 30%. It looks like we're actually on the good side of 30%. Um, let's go ahead and use that. H0 is that the proportion is 0 0.30. And then the alternate hypothesis is going to be that it's less. Now here we'd like to be informed the alternate hypothesis is true. It's not like the null hypothesis is always supposed to be the thing we'd like to be true in some sense. But it's a definite value for p that we can compare to. Okay, Basically anything less than 0.30 is great. And so um, that's a good way to divide between the null and appropriate and the alternative hypotheses. Okay. Uh, real quickly, the appropriate assumptions. Randomization, it is said to be a random sample. Okay, Independence, it's not 100% sure, um, but probably people's decisions to smoke are somewhat independent of each other. And 10,204, you'd think that they wouldn't all decide one way or another. So that should be OK. The 10% condition, this is a big sample, but we're still not more than 10% eh, of all high school students. So we haven't started to use them up. And of course, success failure, that's one that's just a, a straightforward calculation. NP and NQ, oops, well, 0.3 or 0.7 times 10,000, much, much greater, that's what that means, than 10. Okay. So our, we do really need to check these conditions. We do need to take this seriously. But here it wasn't a big, uh, big problem. OK, let's find the p-value. Alrighty. So this is a one proportion z-test. And what are the calculations we need? We need the, um, we need the standard deviation of p-hat. Come on. And that's going to be root pq over n. Notice it's a standard deviation, not a standard error. And we really use pq. We use the p0 and q0. That's the thing about hypothesis testing. Is we've got that, those definite values to go ahead and use. Okay, So that's going to be 0 0.30 times 0 0.70 over 10204. That's going to give us a pretty small number. Okay, that's 10 to the minus 3. Let's get that out of some scientific notation. 00454, let's say. Okay, so less than half a percent. Okay, and of course the mean, uh, the mean is just 0.30. We're going to assume that it's that all the samples we're going to get are scattered but centered on 0.30 and not scattered very much because of the standard deviation. And then we're going to see, given that assumption, what's the likelihood that we would have actually gotten the 28.5. OK, so we've got a um, z-score, which is uh, 28.5 minus 30 compared to 0 0.00, oh, let's see, that was percent. So let's see, convert, convert that to 4 percent. OK, and that's going to be minus 3.3. That's a pretty healthy z-score. Let's convert it to a p-value. Okay, The probability, that's the probability that z is less than minus 3.3. Now, this is where we decide. We want to make sure we, we know one-sided or two-sided. Well, we really want to know, is it really less? That's where we really decided up here when we did the alternate, alternative hypothesis. We care whether it's 0 0.30, and then we care whether it's less than 0 0.30. So that's why we do a one-tailed version here, because um, we're not—we um, really are much more interested in whether it's less than 
the, uh, the null hypothesis proportion. Okay, and that is going to be, don't have my calculator with me, but luckily I actually know the answer. It's 0 0.00047 because I have the answer book with me. Okay, so that is 0.047%. That's really small. Okay, so let's see what the p-value means. Okay, this means that the probability of getting 28.5% uh, or less from such a random sample given the assumption that the true proportion is 0.30 is 0.047 percent, i.e., very small. Okay, so what should we conclude from that? Okay, either we really got really lucky and found a bunch of non-smokers more than we would expect just by pure pure luck, a lot of pure luck, very very small percentage, or this null hypothesis was incorrect, and in fact, the true proportion is smaller. Okay, so we conclude that the true proportion is smaller than 30%, which is good news. Okay, now suppose the conclusion turns out to be incorrect. What type of error did you make? That gets into stuff that's specifically in this new chapter about the more the more about test chapter. This would be we have rejected the null hypothesis if that rejection was incorrect that's called a type 1 error okay we thought something interesting was going on when it wasn't we thought the defendant was guilty when he wasn't we thought it was a false positive we thought for another analogies we thought we had some horrible disease when in fact we really didn't have the disease false positive or convicting the innocent okay something basically saying something is interesting is going on when in fact nope nothing to see here it's actually really just 30 percent after all okay but it's very unlikely the probability of making that error here is very very small it's really unlikely that we really did get s such a lucky uh, sample and that would be the explanation for this low number. Probably the explanation for the low number is that in fact that the population proportion really isn't 0.30, it's something less, okay? Now we could go further if we have, as we have in another video and make a confidence interval, sort of switch our perspective and say, okay, well, let's take that 28.5% really seriously and think about how close I am to that 28.5% around, so that's around the sample value. And that's probably going to be pretty small, again, because the sample size is really big. It's probably going to be something on the order of just, uh, you know, like 1 20th of a percent like this. So we're probably pretty sure that it's pretty close to 28.5%. In terms of the, the logic of hypothesis testing, however, we would say we, we ran with this null hypothesis. It was simple. It was definite. It's something that we know we're interested in. We found that we rejected the null. And then we just have to realize that there is still a tiny possibility that we made this particular kind of error a type 1 error.